Welcome, my name is Devin Arthurson. I'm teaching at Huckle University. And let me just share my slides with you to give you some more details about this presentation, which is a reflecting on academic and career paths. Uh, my email address is there, darthurson at fc.hackle.ac.jp. I'll just show that at the beginning instead of at the end. And uh, just on a side note, I think it might be under the abstract, but if you have your CV and you put it in chronological order, or if you have a professional networking um, site you use, such as LinkedIn, I recommend that you also have that information on hand, as well as a pen and a paper or a device to do some uh, reflecting uh, through this process. All right, here's our overview. Now, why examine academic and career paths, the benefits, one approach, insights from explorations and references. Why examine academic and career paths? I have a few reasons. Uh, it's accessibility. Uh, we all have a career and academic paths, so we can uh, easily get them, especially uh, with uh, networking sites, uh, it's very easy to see a list of that. And as we are continuing our academic journeys, we are always compiling our CVs. Another thing is preparation. It's a great way to help you pr prepare for uh, a new job, a change in jobs, or a new challenge within your job. Uh, a nice way to reflect and uh, see what you've done. And in that reflection, path, you can also give yourself recognition. So just let me share a little bit of what I learned in the research process. And that will be, I started looking for academic and career paths. And of course, a lot of university websites have reference to that because they really want to have uh, resources to help students take that step of graduation to entering the workforce. So I looked and found at Millbury College, its career exploration guide states exploration is a process. So I think no matter what field we're in or discipline, that is good advice. I looked at University of California, San Francisco's website, and uh, they outline the importance of reflection in preparation for new career paths or job positions. So definitely when we are starting to revise our CVs or resumes, we just automatically start looking back at what we're doing, uh, we've done, and to help us prepare for what we'll be doing next. So a great way to prepare. In a medical journal article, uh, a doctor reflected on her 50-year academic career, and that provided insight on how to explore these academic and career paths. And one thing that really uh, struck me uh, in the article was the more experience and exposure you have, the more you realize there is not a single mode and not a single way to do things. Furthermore, each person is a unique individual, so working out their own pattern, thinking about it, planning it, and trying different things out is important. And that was Hall uh, 2017. So I think that's uh, wonderful advice, and I also think that what I'll be sharing with you will be different from your reality. So I'm really happy if you, you go through this process, you share with me some insights you might have come up with. So I think that's uh, helpful information from Hall. Uh, an article by Moody and Grenier in 2003 uh, was a research on the career path of an English language teacher's um, beginnings to midpoint career. So a period of 15 years of an ELT expats in Korea. So uh, the medical doctor was 50 years. This one was looking at 15 years. So it's kind of interesting to see that. And I also looked at Farrell because Farrell gives us so much insight into reflection. So I'll just share a few uh, quotes from Farrell that uh, really helped me stay focused um, in this process. 
Teachers who engage in reflective practice can develop a deeper understanding of their teaching, access their professional growth, develop informed decision-making skills and become proactive and confident in their teaching. That's coming from a 2018 article. The same article states over their careers, teachers construct and reconstruct usually tactically a uh, conceptual sense of who they are and their self-image. And this is manifested through what they do, their professional role identity. Teacher role identity includes teacher beliefs, values, and emotions, and many aspects of being a teacher. And lastly, from the same article again, by reflecting on their teacher identity roles and how they've been shaped over time and by whom, language teachers can then consider how these roles need to be nurtured during their careers. So I think that's especially relevant to what we're doing. Let me share the benefits. Uh, these are ones I, I personally experienced. Recalibration. For instance, when you look back on what you've been doing in the past and you, you look at those points, I think you can see maybe values you might have lost or forgotten. I know that happened with me. So I could take those values back and put them into my current practice. So I felt I could really recalibrate myself. It also gave me a lot of motivation to see what I've done in the past and to take that those past um, highlights and think, well, how can I continue to motivate myself? How can I continue to challenge myself? And I think that uh, maybe ties in with uh, celebrating. So I think a way to keep ourselves motivated is by celebrating what we have done. And when we look at where we are, were when we were um, an undergraduate student to where we are now, I think we can see growth and we can see progress and we should be proud of that. So I think those are some benefits I personally experienced. And uh, as you do this process, I, I hope you will also share with me uh, other benefits that you experienced. All right, one approach. So this is what I did. I compiled CVs and ordered them chronologically. Or you could review your personal networking site, such as your, your LinkedIn account. And before we look at the questions, I will just show you what I did to give you some ideas. You can see that, let me make it a little bit bigger. All right, I started with, right after graduating from high school, I started working when I was 18. I eventually went to college. I got an administrative assistant diploma. I worked in that field for a few years. I decided I wanted to go into social work and I focused uh, community development and policy change. I included my two practicums because I thought it was uh, beneficial. Uh, even though I wasn't paid, I learned a lot and figured out a lot about what I think I wanted to be if I was a social worker. I officially never became one, but it was a good process. I eventually, eventually, quite quickly, actually, uh, graduated in May, I believe, and in July, I was in Osaka working as an assistant language teacher. I did that for five years, and then I became a native uh, English teacher. I moved to Tokyo and began working at a private university. I did a master's during that time and uh, got another position at the same university from a language instructor to an adjunct lecturer. I did a CELTA, and now I am working at the second private university in Tochigi. So I'll give you time, how about one, oh, about two minutes, just to take a, a look at what you've done and um, sort of organize that. It might be useful as you're looking at all of these things, because this presentation is not so long, but at least to get a start, maybe just highlighting one or two points in your path that you want to focus on. So for myself, probably what was most valuable was when I started uh, a teaching in this field, um, an English language teacher when I was at a high school, and then going to a university, the first university. So for me, what would be most beautiful is looking at dialoguing with those two points with my present self. 
I'm going to show you the questions. I think it will become clearer. So uh, let me give you a minute to decide your ideas and uh, just make sure you have that information available. All right, so that minute is coming to a close. I'll go back to the slides and show you uh, the questions I used for reflection. Uh, so I looked at what were my interests, goals, and values? Who influenced me? Why? How would the past me view current me? Would they be happy, sad, proud, disappointed, etc.? Why? And the last question was, how can current me be influenced by past me? What would positively influence my practice? So I think those hold some of the same components that uh, I read in the feral quotes. And I took these questions and I added them into the table, expanding the columns. So let me go back and just show you that so you can get a bit of an idea of how you can go on to the next uh, step in this process. All right, so there is the CV, and then it turned it into a reflective table by adding uh, interests, goals, values, influences, past me's view of current me, and current me's view of past me. So you might wanna choose one or two points. I don't think you, it's up to you how much you would like to write. I kept this quite short, uh, especially with uh, the values and influences. I don't think I added a lot and uh, just tried to make it concise, but I'm showing it on quite a small table. So if you want to take this into a journaling activity, I think that would be uh, a great idea. You would get more meaningful and deeper insights, I'm sure. So if you want to do all four sections you can during this time, or if you just want to focus on uh, maybe one, you can do that. So I'd like to give you time and I'll, maybe I'll put the questions back on so you can uh, have a more concrete uh, and expanded version of those questions. So let me go back to the slide and I'll give you how about three minutes to take a look at that for yourself. So, uh, Find present use job and uh, have some fun enjoy, uh, kind of exploring what past you was doing. Where were you at that time? Uh, what were your influences? And have that dialogue between uh, past and present you. And I'll give you time to do that now.
All right, a few minutes have gone by, so I hope that gave you a chance to get a little bit of insight into looking back at your past and having some dialogue with your present and vice versa. I will, again, go back to the table I shared previously. So I wanted to be guided by something more concrete in this reflection process. So I looked at a reflection mythology, steps one to 10 by Desjardins and Smith from 2011. I didn't do all of the steps, but I will share the highlighted steps I did and, and tell you a little bit about them. I recognize the need. I guess the first part of the need was doing pansic. But I was also going to be transitioning to a new job. So I thought um, before May, I want to reflect on this. And I felt the reflection process could go deeper. So when I heard that there would also be this uh, TED conference, I wanted to expand on that. So I thought it would be beneficial for me to look more deeply at what I've been doing and how it was going to affect what I'm doing now. So I had the time uh, before I started the job in April. And then I had the time, I think beginning in summer up until this point to sort of start working on this, asking myself those questions and analyzing what I wrote. I documented all the insights in the table above. And uh I decided just to highlight the words that appeared more than once. So um, for values, fun, enjoy, growth, learn were really uh, something that came up multiple times. Influence was friends, coworkers. And then I also had friends who are coworkers. So that also was something that uh, developed as I went on my journey. I took those words and I generalized them into key insights. So let me show you the slide that has that displayed so it's a little easier for you to read. Okay, uh, education and employment values definitely were enjoyment, learning, and growth. I was interesting for me to see that was something that was always present um, on this journey. And I think it's what really helps me uh, continue to want to motivate myself and uh, enjoy my job. And I think highlighting that I want to have fun at my job uh, really helps me with that. My friends, coworkers, and coworkers who were friends consistently influenced me through this journey. And I think it's been interesting, um, I guess, since probably I started working at the first university that friends who were coworkers uh, become, became a stronger uh, influence on me and uh, kind of made an appearance in my life. So that was really nice. And in the dialogue with my past and present self, I kept it positive to recognize and celebrate what I had achieved as well as to keep myself motivated. I'll just use an example of going back to social work and community development. I was very interested in community development and practices, uh, how you can work in a community and support the members. And I felt that was something that I was doing quite well when I was at a high school. I think I was working in such a new community being in Japan. It was apparent for me that I really had to take what I learned in social work to adapt and um, to feel that I was doing meaningful work there. However, when I went to work at a university, I was going to, again, a different environment. I was coming from team teaching to teaching by myself. The program was very structured and I received a lot of support, but ultimately I was alone in the classroom. And I think being unconfident and maybe a little bit overwhelmed by what an instructor does, uh, caused me to lose those community development values. And I felt I took on a different persona. So I didn't really recognize that was happening until I got the job at my current university. I felt that I really needed to look back and see what I had forgotten about or lost and take what was 
still important to me and put it into my teaching practice. I always felt community development and uh, supporting people in a non, you know, in an egalitarian fashion, uh, giving a lot of autonomy was something that I was doing, uh, but I think I was sort of lacking the need, to, not the need, the way of giving support to learners. I felt like I was making them maybe almost too independent by not giving them enough support. And when I went to the second university where I am currently, I understood that it was really important for me to be more nurturing, uh, be more of a facilitator uh, rather a class than a classroom manager, uh, someone who had everything you know, in order, step-by-step, step, everything was flowing perfectly. I've realized since I'm more interested in facilitating and giving support, I've had the opportunity to be more creative, uh, to feel that there's less boundaries in what I'm doing. And that's been so rewarding for me. It's really kept me um, excited about what I'm doing. And I think it will really shape um, my future career path and my journey. Uh, whatever that will be. Uh, if it's at the same university, I just hope I can continue to be fresh and excited what I'm about what I'm doing and definitely look back at this this first year as um, uh, I guess a really grounding point to what it will shape me to do in the future. So I'm very interested in knowing what you could gain out of this process and if you're able to uh, do something um more deeply and continuous, uh, kind of continue it because we didn't have a lot of time. I would be so excited to hear what you did. And if you could share that with me, that would be wonderful. So I really appreciate your time. And I hope that you use what you've done in your past as a way of recalibrating yourself, reflecting, celebrating, being motivated and just helping you to become the best instructor or whatever position you are um, in. So thank you for your time. And I'll end this presentation now.